Hey, uh, Reese, I actually do have something kind of serious to talk about right now. Hey, what's up? Off. Camera. You really shouldn't have told me what you told me, Mikey. That was the norm. So I did it to other kids and didn't know that it was wrong. I, I, Reese, I didn't even know what the definition of a sex offender was until it was 2013, when I was about to be taken away. So how did you even get caught fucking doing that shit, though? So, um... Uh... One of the kids said something. Uh... And, uh... My dad... Oh, God. My dad yelled and screamed at me. He... So... So when... When a, when a kid gets molested... By someone who's still a minor, it, it is then that Julie told me this. It is the parents, yeah, the parents' job to ask, well, who did that to you? My mom and dad didn't ask me that. They didn't ask me if I was molested. You want to know what my parents said? My dad said, do you have any idea what this will do if this were to get out. You would ruin me. Local pastor's son, convicted sex offender. So, so he would only, so he only gave, he only gave a fuck about himself. And His reputation. He only gave a fuck that you, like touching kids, would fuck him over. So he didn't even give a fuck about what you fucking went through. Exactly. I'm sorry, Mike. Gets hey, worse. I, okay. So, and, and it's okay. Um, so, my dad said, and the mistress who was a daycare provider, it was her kids. I, I did it to her daycare kids. Right. Um, he said, he said, I'll fucking get you out of this, but if you fucking, you, if I do, you better be fucking grateful and shit like that. And then, uh, so, then, when my dad was driving me to school, like he was still mad, he said that when he was around my age, he did the same thing. Yeah. And uh, so for, for the longest time, I thought it was a genetic thing, and that's what further heightened my want to kill myself. Turns out, it wasn't genetic, it just so happened to me. So, um, then, so, I'm, the, it's like a Iowa test of basic skills time, around this time. And so, I can't focus. I'm thinking, like, like my dad, Basically, my dad basically said, if anybody shows up, don't say a word, just go with them, say nothing. So I'm in class thinking cops are gonna show up and take me away in front of my friends. And my dad showed up and he said, okay, Debbie, the mistress, right. went to DHS, they're not gonna do anything. You're going to be fine. It's just that now we know, right? Not to do that or whatever the fuck he said. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Not going to. I, I want to say it's be, it, I want to say that that's proof that your dad loves you. But then I remember his reputation. Yeah, that's what he cared about. And that's the shittiest fucking part. You don't have a dad. Yeah. Oh, and to make matters worse, the mistress talked to me a few days after that and she was only she only went to DHS get this to not lose her license and to not lose money wasn't even about me all of this wasn't even about me 
It was about other people's interests. And, and keep in mind, when I was molested at seven, I'm doing this to other kids until I'm fucking 15. So with that, it's uh, 10th grade now. Ninth grade's gone, 10th grade here. New year. Right. I'm in the computer lab thinking everything's going to be just fine until the realization comes to me. It shoots it like the realization shoots me through the heart like an arrow. I'm like, oh, my God. That's two kids that were taken care of. What about the fucking other kids? I've been doing it, too, since I was seven. What's stopping them from coming forward? So from, so from 10th grade all the way till I was, all the way till 2018, I have been living in constant fear and anxiety that something was gonna happen and I was about to kill myself that year. I was about to leave a note. I was about to say, I didn't tell any of you guys because I didn't think you guys would understand. And uh, I'm pretty sure you guys wouldn't. And uh, so I, uh, yeah, I came very close to taking my own life that year. It, I, I seriously had it all planned out. I was gonna just grab a gun, go to my room and shoot myself. Cause I couldn't live with the constant fear. And, uh, was it, was it fear or was it more guilt? Both fear and guilt. Like the, I just came over the fact that your dad, your dad didn't even like fucking care about what fucking happened to you. He just only cared about his fucking reputation. You can keep talking. I'm going to brush my fucking teeth. Okay. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> that's a very serious issue. Uh, I did not rape her. Uh, the most we did sexual was she gave me a few blowjobs and a few hand jobs, and I felt her up. And but like we we never had actual sex. I was still a virgin at the time. Um. So immediately, naturally, I protested. I said I didn't though, and he said, "Yeah, everybody, everybody knows that, Mike." In fact, when I heard it, I was like, wait, Michael? The same Michael that hid his Nintendo DS underneath his pillows when he was in middle school? No way. No way Michael would do that. So, <clears throat> once again, it was great having friends that had my back uh, because that was a scary situation, and I was even more angry at her for doing that. But... Like, fast forward to late 2017, early 2018. I'm sitting outside with my best friend Jesse and his at-the-time girlfriend. And I said, you know, I'm going to be honest. Despite everything that happened, I still, I still missed Margie. And they were like, really? Like, why? And I said, what we had was good before everything fell apart. And, uh, I don't know, I guess in a way, I guess I still kind of miss her, even though I know I shouldn't, because it was just awful. I, I do miss her a little bit. I don't know why I don't want to, but I do. And there's, um, it's going to take a bit, I guess. <laughs> this was a while ago, 2017, you know, six years later. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I just want you to know that I still am very much mad. I, I still am very much so mad at you for doing that and you ought to be ashamed for doing that um 
that's a really low level to stoop to. And apparently she did this with all of her exes. And uh, Claire, <clears throat> you are a fat, annoying bitch, and it's no wonder you don't have any friends. And the friends that do have you don't genuinely care about you. Um... I really want to say the absolute worst things to you right now, but I can't because of my lingering feelings. And that makes me more angry than what you actually did. So, uh, I guess if there's anything I got to say, it's, I hope wherever you are, you're, you're happy and you're okay. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's it. There's a lot more I want to say about it, but I know I can't. I guess I'm just, I don't know. I guess I didn't really think about it until now. Like, why? Why did it, why did that have to happen the way it did? Why were we so stupid? Why didn't I... Why didn't you just... Why didn't we just go to your house when you were supposed to? I don't know. I guess I... No other excuse for it other than the fact we were young and stupid, you know? <laughs> There's no other words for it. So, uh, take care, wherever you are. And, uh, you still ought to be ashamed for what you've done. Because that could have destroyed my life completely. So. Thanks for that. Reese doesn't know that I'm making this video. Uh, he gave me his camera to talk about. <clears throat> but I just want to say that to the date, uh, you have one more day till till you uh, till you move to another town. And I just want to say that I cannot tell you how happy I am for you, Reese. I genuinely do hope you make it big. I genuinely do hope everything works out for you. It just seems like yesterday we were attending church group. Um... You know, the night I told, the day I told you that <clears throat> I needed you out of my house, I was scared shitless to tell you. I, I was scared. Because I thought, I don't know, I just thought you were going to put me in the series in a negative light. But after you assured me that that wouldn't happen and that you were not mad at me, a great, a, a great wave of relief washed over me. And I just want to say thank you for, for holding true to that. And, uh, I just, God, I just, again, I can't tell you how happy I am for you. And I also want to thank you for, for always being a good friend. And I want to say thank you for the Game Boy you gave me. I've already told you countless times, thank you. Uh, but for something like that to be given to me, after losing mine, 
There are no words. Um, it was a really, just a genuinely sweet thing for you to do. And I just want you to know it's in good hands, and uh, I'll never stop supporting you, bud. I'll never stop. I promise. And, uh, you know, it's been a journey for you. It has been an insane journey. You know? <laughs> I, it's just, I, it's just crazy. You're finally doing it. So, we're, we're going to hang out after this. I'm, <laughs> we're not going to stop hanging out just because you're moving. Like, good luck with that, you know? <laughs> <coughs> but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I guess there's not much left else, not much else to say except fucking congratulations, bro. You really needed a win. And you've gotten quite a few lately. So good shit, man. Keep it up. Why am I going to jail? Because I fuck kids! Mandolin Mikey Loves fingering a minor And I do mean a little minor He loves the little kids and he loves their little tits Yeah, Mikey's gonna do it a little more Yeah, he's gonna molest little whores Mandolin Look, I'm gonna say this right now, man I'm young butt piss, okay? I ain't gonna expose a pedophile without also making pedophile jokes, okay? Listen, Chris Hansen would never make a dick joke. I don't know if that makes me better or worse, but here's the thing, right? Mikey housed me for about six months or so when I was about to end up homeless. I did say yes, I am just, well, <clears throat> Adam and Jesse are right, and so is Reese. Like, my dad is genuinely racist. Like, I... I, I'm pretty sure I've made that clear before. So as soon as he sees a mixed guy in my fucking house, he'll be nice to him, to his face, but he's gonna fucking complain to my mom, his friends, his family, and depending on how pissed off he is, even me. So, um, yeah, I am a little nervous about that, but I mean, Reese is one of my best friends, so I can't just really say no to his face when he's hurting like this. I just can't do that. That's not me. Here's the situation. Mikey lives on his parents' property. They are giving him a house for free. Mikey claims that his dad is allegedly racist. And I mean, he wouldn't be saying that if there weren't, if there wasn't, you know, where there's smoke, there's usually a fire. That's the problem with me moving in with Mikey. And also another problem is he says that if I'm gonna live with him, I have to shower every fucking day. Not just because he doesn't want to smell the stink, but because if I stink up his house, his dad will know something's up if he goes in there. And also, I can't park my car outside his house. Otherwise, his dad will know that, that somebody's living there. He wouldn't have a problem with anybody living there if I was white. And also, Mikey's the one who said nigger in that fucking skit. Did someone say nigger? <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Nigger of color. And Mikey's against racism. You know what I mean? So yeah, I have to shower every fucking day. Otherwise his dad will smell another person living in there, basically. And the only thing I'm allowed to have in there is my fucking computer. Because since it's a gaming computer, he can Mikey can pass it off as his. I can't have a bed in there because then his dad will know someone's living there. I can't have anything else in there that doesn't look like something that Mikey would have himself. That's the situation I'm in right now. This is not a bit. This is legit me getting kicked out. Like I'm literally getting kicked out on the fucking 21st right there. It's your boy, young butt piss. I didn't think. 
were serious when they started to shout. I sat on my ass and fucked around, and now I'm getting kicked out, cause they <laughs> but even though they <laughs> That's so fucking wild that I And now I'm moving in with Mikey And I'm not really sure if Mikey fucking likey I'm gonna have to shower every day Even though being clean is fucking gay Maybe it's fucking time To get rid of all this grime Maybe it's time to stop smelling like shit and piss Maybe it's time to start washing my dick Using deodorant on my pits Scrub the crusties off my tits Maybe I'll brush my teeth And start to wash my feet I'm gonna have to wipe my butt And get rid of the jock itch on my nuts I used to be sexy as fuck And maybe it's time to look just like I did in my fucking prime Yeah, I'm gonna get hot again And maybe then I'll get a fucking girlfriend I'm sorry, all the lights just went out randomly There's... There we go Song's over Cheeto. Cheeto. <laughs> and obviously I can't fucking take her with me. <laughs> Mikey can't have cats in his house. I have to leave her here. <laughs> I love you, Cheeto. <laughs> I can't take her with me. She's shitting. This is it's ruining the, it's ruining the sentimental moment. But <laughs> so I'm moving in with Mikey tomorrow. This is the last time I'm gonna see Cheeto. Bye, Cheeto. Goodbye, Cheeto. I'll miss you, Cheeto. It's your boy, Young Butt Piss. And if I had a death note in real life, here are all the names I'd write. I'd put down Jerry Seinfeld, which is very bold. Cause in 1993, he fucked a 17-year-old. I'd also write down 50-year-old Seth MacFarlane. Cause he allegedly fucked a 20 year old Liam Marie Johnson And just in case they're guilty of something I'd write down Young Gravy and Baby No Money But just to be petty I'd also write down Mikey Murphy I would also write down Bo Burnham Just so I could burn him Then I'd take a gander At the dude who plays Homelander And I'd write his name down 
And since Jimmy Kimmel makes me frown I'd fucking write his name down too And I'ma be real I don't fucking trust Jordan Peele So I'd write down his name Yeah, once I get my fame I'm gonna be the Kira of Hollywood But instead of taking their lives I'll kill their fucking careers just to make them cry Hashtag foreshadowing And here's a new album cover now, today's the day that I move in with Mikey, but in order to bring this desk over without dismantling it, I'm going to have to go clean my entire car so I can push the seats down and put it into my fucking Buick Rendezvous. So join me as I clean my disgusting fucking car. Goodbye, Cheeto. Goodbye forever. I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm kind of embarrassed to even fucking open my car here. There's like tons of people around. Yeah? Maybe you shouldn't let your car build up like this. You can't even open your fucking door around these people. Wait a minute, hold on. Actually, back it up, back it up. Young butt piss is embarrassed of being gross? You're embarrassed of being perceived as gross by the public? Well, when I'm not in character, yeah. You're always in fucking character. I, I can't do this. Reese, you have to do it. You're, you're moving with Mikey tonight. You have to clean your fucking car. I'll figure something out. I just fucking moved all the trash right here and all over the place and now I have room for the fucking desk. You're so disgusting. Jesus Christ. All right, the fucking desk is in the back. That's Adam. I'm going to follow him all the way to Mikey's. Let's go. And I'm officially moved in to Mikey's. <laughs> Fuck yes. nice out here if I do say so myself. But the thing is, I just... I'm gonna have to drive into town when I go to work at Fairway. Fairway is all the way across Burlington. I gotta drive all the way across Burlington to go to fucking work. Young butt piss in the country. What will he do? do, 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 do. Bro, he's literally walking past the exact area where I took a shit. We didn't step in it. It's your boy, Young Buck Pierce, and I'm a country rapist. Got the asshole gaping. I'm a rapist on a regular basis. I'll be raping. Got the asshole gaping. I rape you in the country. Yeah, I'm a country rapist. The amount of brain power that went into this song matches that of Rick and Morty and Black Mirror. I love living with Mikey. I've only been here, I haven't been here for a full 24 hours yet. But there is somebody that I do miss. And you probably know who I'm talking about. So, let's make a song. I do miss ya. You were their pet You were the best animal I've ever met Yeah, I fucking miss you 
I always clean your pee and poo Yeah You already know who I'm talking about This pet was pretty neat oh. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking about Wolfie I miss you, Wolfie Cock and balls Hello. Cock and balls Miss you, Wolfie. Cock and balls. You know, I thought that song was going to be about Cheeto. Who's Cheeto? Damn. Nigga really just decanonized Cheeto from the butt piss lore. You see, that's Mikey's room. I'm not allowed to go in there. <laughs> this is what I do when I suck the air into my asshole and fart it out. Screaming? Uh, yeah. Shut up. Fuck yeah, my pudding! Forgot about this shit. Actually, I'm gonna go eat this really quick. I'm gonna eat it in here. I probably have a spoon in here somewhere. So remember when I said that Mikey's dad and Mikey's parents probably aren't gonna want me to move in with him? Well, uh, Mikey gave him a, a little sob story. He told them, he told his parents that I just got out of a four year relationship with a girl who cheated on me and she kicked me out of her apartment and I needed somewhere to stay. They felt so bad for me, even though that never fucking happened, and now I'm living here. I'm dead serious, by the way. This is not a, this is not a fucking bit. That is what Michael actually told them, and he told me what he told them, so he's like, okay, just act really broken up about it. And I'm like, you know, I at least seemed to look like I had a girlfriend, so I shaved and I got a haircut and I showered, so. And also, it's important for you guys to remember that this is not Mike's house. It's his parents' house. This is their property that we are on. They decide who gets to move in and who doesn't. That's why this is important. So he had to lie to them to get them to feel bad for me. But I'm only gonna be here for a few months. I'm now saving up money so I can move in with Adam later on. Mexicans. Wait, Donald Trump jokes are still funny, right? And who cares? My white liberal audience will eat this shit up. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Ah, oh, shit. Now it's just a rip off of Pink Guy. Um. Uh, d d d d Donald Trump loves the Mexicans so much He built a wall to get away from them Donald Trump loves the Mexicans The same way Hitler loved the Jews And I'm sure Hitler would have loved the Mexicans too 
This is by far the worst song I've ever made But that's not really saying much I don't want to be clean. So, Mikey got fucking wasted last night. I mean, nigga loves beer. What, 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 what can I say? Now, I, however, hate the taste of alcohol. Like, I cannot stand it. Which is great, because if I did drink beer, I'd be scared of the shit that I would say. Oh, I am not really pansexual. I just needed an excuse to say the word faggot and get away with it. Uh, uh, Picasso. I'd like to eat, you know. Some... My name's Mikey. I have autism. That's true. <laughs> These are my feet. Uh, for all of you foot fanatics out there, um, I like my feet, but you know, you be the judge. This is the bowl of cookies. Milk. I want to crush up the cookies and make cereal out of it. Bruh. Instant. Instant regret? Yeah, that you're damn right. Hold up, hold on, we got this, we got this. You're yeah. not, you're not gonna use that shit on the, f oh, yeah, okay, hold on, just keep going, keep going, keep going. That's so disgusting. It's gonna be a great bit, don't trust me, here. How about I just do it a little less hard this time? No, it's a good bit, it's a good bit. Here, 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 here. Okay. I just gotta like hold it down, cause I like, went like this and it just went everywhere, hold on. I wish he would spoon me. Maybe later. Okay. I know you're not going to, but it's the thought that counts. I do be lying. Yeah, you... Yeah. God, God, I fucking love lying. Alright, here we go. Mm. Wow. Cooking with butt piss. Except this is soup. This cooking episode was brought to you by Kingdom Hearts. I don't think Disney approved of this, but, you know, it, it's whatever. Mm. The fart added a lot of flavor to it. Bone apple queef. Hey, Reese. Yes, Fit? All right, let's play a game of Fuck, Mary Kill. All right, who, who, who are the three people? Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana, Ashley O. Uh, fuck Ashley O, marry Miley Cyrus, and kill Hannah Montana. Well, I kill Hannah. Well, Hannah Montana is like canonically underage. So killing a kid is better than fucking her? Yeah. Yeah, I'd much rather someone kill a kid than fuck a kid, personally. Hey, Mikey. Yeah. Is it better to fuck a kid or kill a kid? <laughs> Try to prove a point here. <laughs> you want to repeat that dumbass shit you just said? Hey guys, here's real, actual footage of me realizing I'm the Antichrist as soon as I stop taking my medicine. Um, I did not find out what he was until shortly after I moved out. Hey Mikey! Yeah? Is it better to fuck a kid or kill a kid? <laughs> Try to prove a point here. <laughs> you want to repeat that dumbass shit you just said? I, he admitted everything to me. And I recorded him without his permission, without his knowledge. Reese, I didn't even know what the definition of a sex offender was until it was 2013, when I was about to be taken away. And he admitted everything to me. I, um, I, it's... The thing is, right, I've had this recording of him saying this on my hard drive for several months now. Probably a lot better than what Mikey has on his hard drive, but I digress. I have a responsibility to release this now. 
because Mikey has a girlfriend right now, and he expressed interest in starting a family with her. So, I the thing is, I was originally only like going to keep this part about Mikey in my show uh, for when I sell it to HBO Max in like three years, or at least try to, right? The thing is, um, if I only, if I'm only willing to expose pedophiles for profit, then I'm no better than Chris Hansen, right? And it, and it's, and listen, I'm going to be real with you. If he didn't have a girlfriend that he's openly expressed interest in having a family with, I would not be releasing this documentary right now. Well, although I, I well, actually I can't even release it right now. I have to release it after I move out of Iowa because I'm putting myself in danger by even like, because the thing is, if you heard Mikey during that voice recording, he, he said, according to him, his father is a pastor who did the same shit as Mikey when he was little. And also uh, his dad's mistress, the woman he was cheating on Mikey's mom with, she ran, she runs a daycare and she lied to DHS so she could keep her license and keep making money off of the kids that Mikey molested. Listen, if I could go back in time, I would have said faggot a few times. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the thing is, I mean, I mean, I would go back to the school, and she has, like, a fucking talking to me in front of the whole fucking class. It's like she wanted the whole class to hear it, to, like, humiliate me or whatever. And she's like, if you bring your DS to school again, it'll be mine. And then Prince Holloway, he pipes up, and he's like, uh, wouldn't that be stealing? <laughs> What a thug, nigga. <laughs> Creatine. Yeah. Nigga. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's that? What's that? Ooh. Damn. So, Mikey just got back from a fucking workout. Ask me what my personality is. What's your personality? Creatine. 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 Creatine coochie. You feel better? No. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I wish he would spoon me. Maybe later. Okay. I know you're not going to, but it's the thought that counts. I do rely on it. Yeah, you, you know. God, I fucking love lying. God, I fucking love lying. Season 2, Episode 6. Best bit of foreshadowing in the TV show so far. Yeah! Bingo boo ya! Bingo bingo boo ya! Bingo boo ya! Bingo bingo boo ya! It's a little too much ranch. Are you going to do something stupid? No, no, no. I feel like you're going to do something stupid. But no, I'm just feeling a little existential right now. You know, just for that. Fuck you too. Perfect. All right, here we go. Put that back on uh, in the fucking bathroom to brush my teeth with later. There we go. Alright, alright, so we'll put it right fucking there. And put some fucking soap on there. Stay still! Stay still! Fuck! You're making me missing shit, bro!
But anyways, I don't want to be that guy. But I don't think you're going to be able to use that part of the keyblade to fucking crush cookies anymore. You know, I was actually doing some research on your fucking music, Reese. And you know what? Me loving music all of my life, I just want to say, you have finally made a point. <laughs> your music is better than the Beatles. Yeah? It's a great... It, you you have a true I am the great... Am, am, I, am I a meme rapper or an artist? You are an artist through and through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's fucking right, Mikey. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm Mikey. <laughs> Oh. But, but yeah, dude, you'll get your you'll get your dick size back. Don't worry. Thank Christ. I told my brother that the day my dick stops working, I'm probably gonna kill myself. You know what would make me kill myself? What? If your dick stopped working? No. What would truly make me kill myself is if I stopped being a narcissist and realized stopped to realize how many people I've fucking hurt and how how all the damage is completely irreversible. And then I lose my ego and I gain empathy and then I'm like, oh my God, and I kill myself. Was that a little too real? I mean, yeah, but since you have, since you have mild schizophrenia, it's probably never gonna go away, dude. Beast, Mikey. Well, it, schizophrenia does not go away. Yeah, I mean, it, it can't be cured. Yeah, exactly. But it can be cured with a gun to the fucking skull. Don't do that, guys. Don't, 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 don't actually do that. Now, unless you're unless you're a pedophile or a rapist. Now there are some. You should probably, you like know, like, a, like you, you know, like like I mean, uh, uh, there's actually a pill that can cure your pedophilia by putting a gun like here. Here, let me demonstrate. This, like, this is how you fuck take. This is how you take the pill. or uh, uh huh. Is the bit funny yet? Oh, it's funny, and I agree <laughs> with you 100. percent All right. But what I was. All right. Go ahead and continue talking. But I'm not a pedophile. No, no, you're not. I'm just here. Here, here, go on, go on. Go on, creatine. Creatine shit. Creatine shit. Yeah, yeah, creatine shit right now. Yeah. Creatine shit. I'm all about these Creatine things. shit. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you, you want to know what's important, though? Oh, yeah, creatine shit. Yeah, creatine shit. Fucking got to coat that shit literally in creatine. Because that's how you, you know, get bitches on your... Uh, dick. So, so the first thing you're going to want to do is fucking take a shit... In the toilet. Why is that in my toilet? Oh, I have yet to clean that. No, no, no. That's fine. I'm cleaning tomorrow. Don't worry about it. But why is there a duck in my fucking toilet? What are we talking about, Mikey? <laughs> I mean this with kindness. Get that fucking duck out of my fucking toilet. <laughs> Mikey, there's no duck in the toilet. Listen, I understand you like to make things up to like boost my ratings or whatever, but I asked you, I asked, I asked you have some respect. You don't do that to me, okay? This show has to be real, authentic humor. Yeah. I, I don't like it when you make things up like there being a duck in the toilet. There's no duck. A duck can't even fit in there. A ducks are outside in the pond, Mikey. I'll go get the duck. <laughs> I'm not even mad. I just want to know why. Why? Why is it flushing? Because. Let's try it again. No, also, no, why is there a carpet no. bathroom in here? Huh? Carpet bathroom. I don't know. I didn't build this fucking house. <sighs> Hold on. I know what to do. Reese, can you please just get the duck out of the toilet? Yes, I can do that. Just give me a minute. Give me a fucking minute. Perfect. Ah, what the... I don't want to get any toilet water in my hand. I'll let you shit now. That smells fucking vile. What? That fucking duck. <laughs> what? Duck, what, what duck, Mikey? I'm gonna go shower. I do have something to say. Is it about creatine? It's about the creatine. Did I mention that I hate stupid people? 
They don't deserve they exist. I want them, I want them eradicated <laughs> from society. Um, you think you're the only one? And the thing is, if we really, like, boiled this, like, world down to, like, the only smart people left, we'd have a population as big as Burlington. Like, 30,000 people. Yeah. And that's it. Listen, I I'm going to take this time, right, to, uh, to say, hey, uh... And also... Uh, his dad's mistress, the woman he was cheating on Mikey's mom with, she ran, she runs a daycare, and she lied to DHS so she could keep her license and keep making money off of the kids that Mikey molested. Debbie Carol Jones, uh, the the lady that fucked my dad, um, and played a huge part in ruining my parents' marriage. Um, I can't wait to take the fattest shit on your grave, dude. Oh my god. I'm so fucking excited. I, I'm, I'm literally shaking. Wait, her name's Debbie? Her name is Debbie. What did she do for a fucking living? Uh, so she owned a farm, and she was a daycare provider. She was a daycare provider? Still is. Uh, and if you want me to go into detail about that, uh, she was not only abusive to me, but also abusive to some of those daycare kids when I was a kid. Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I've heard a lot of fucking stories about... Uh, the fucking uh, daycare providers, like, uh, abusing their fucking kids and shit. Yeah, and uh, guess what else? Uh, what else? Uh, the person in charge of reviewing her daycare area right? Um, just keeps writing shit off. Uh, doesn't even bother looking into it. Like, looking into incidents, just write shit off. Like, oh, you get a good grade. Good job. Do you want her to lose her license, Mikey? Oh my god, I would love nothing more. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it in. She almost lost it uh, one time, but her fucking kids stood up to bat for her. Why? I have no fucking clue. But I was like, damn, so close to just losing her fucking lifestyle. Yeah. Okay, well, okay, well then tell the camera what her name was again, her full fucking name. Her name is Deborah Carol Jones. D E B R A. C A R R O L L J O N E S. And your dad cheated on your mom with her? Yep, and she was uglier than my fucking mother. And she smacked you a lot of times? She did more than that. She abused me, manipulated me, made me out to be the reason why my parents' marriage was failing. Um, hit me because I kept getting math answers wrong. Uh, just smacked me out of nowhere and, uh, you know, adults nearby would watch and just fucking laugh or not do anything about it. So, I cannot release this while I'm living in Iowa. So, you, you are watching this. So, sorry, I'm filming this on January 6th, 2024, right now. Right? So, whenever you end up seeing this is when I finally moved out of Iowa and it was safe to release this. Um, hopefully, his girlfriend doesn't get fucking knocked up before then. Hopefully, she just has miscarriage after miscarriage. and That's horrible. But, I, I, but You know what? I already said it. Might as well finish it. Hopefully, she just has miscarriage after miscarriage until this documentary releases. Listen, the fact that I'm even talking like this almost makes me... Listen, I am, I am an anti-hero at best in this documentary. Okay, I I'm a piece of shit exposing bigger pieces of shit. Like Deadpool, he was a bad guy who went after worse guys. Listen, but also it's not a very high bar to say, yeah, I might be young butt pissed, but at least I'm not a fucking pedophile. That's not a high bar to say. That's like when fucking uh, a Boogie on Twitter said, hey, I might be a lol cow, but at least I'm not Onision. It's like, okay, G good, good for you, man. Bare fucking minimum, right? So the thing is, one theme I want to keep perpetuating through this documentary is how Mikey is charismatic. He's charming. He's intelligent. He's attractive. Right? But he's also a pedophile. The thing is, you would never expect a guy like Mikey to be like that. I never expected it. Nobody else did. In fact, um, Mikey's ex, according to him, is the only one who even knew that he did this shit. And she even tried telling people that he did this, and nobody believed her. Because... Well, why would they believe his ex? Like, she's automatically biased by default. But when you're young butt piss and you have six minutes of audio footage of him just straight up admitting it with no cuts at all, it's a little harder to deny that that's reality, right? Before he even knew he touched kids, I found it really weird how he kept talking about this girl that he did not rape, according to him, right? There's this girl named Margie. 
right? I'm gonna bleep out her full legal name. We'll just like I'll every time he calls her Margie, I'll leave that in, right? So he claims that Margie falsely accused him of rape. So what I did was I had him tell the full story while I stepped out of the room. And then I acted like I accidentally deleted that footage and I had him record himself telling the story again so I could see if both versions of the story were completely different. And they kind of are. So let's play both of those stories. Um, I'll, I'll try and spare... Here, like, here, I'm gonna give you the fucking camera. You just tell the story. I got some shit, shit to do. Just fucking like, right. I mean, here, I'll just, just, here, just like tell. It. Hey, so you are about to watch me react to this very clip of Mikey telling his side of the story about a girl who accused him of rape falsely. And the thing is, even though I was in this very room while he was in the fucking kitchen telling this story to my camera, I was not listening. I wanted him to be completely isolated while telling his story. Now, it should be easier for me to detect every lie now that he doesn't have someone to bounce off of in this clip. All right, let's watch it. All right, so basically... Um, Hold on, let me check the audio of this clip really quick. Okay, the audio sounds good. Let's fucking watch it. Um, when I was in college, I was... Oh, it's me, it's me making sure he's not accidentally putting his thumb over the fucking mic on this camera, because it's very easy to do that. Anyways, let's continue. Top there, like, uh, film buff. This is where the mic is right here, so make sure not to hold anything on that. Okay. Pardon me, guys. I'm too retarded to hold a camera. Um, so... Where to begin? So, pretty much, when I was in college, I was pretty chubby. Like, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I was super depressed, didn't know what I was doing. Um, so eventually, one day, I just snapped out of it. It was like a light switch. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get fit as fuck. You can hear me playing the pronunciation for erythrasma in the background on my computer because I wanted to know how to pronounce it for the series. So that's what I did. I got a membership at SportsWorks with a few former friends of mine. And, uh, <clears throat> and I went to work. And over, over time, it was damn near overnight that I started shedding the weight, gaining a little bit of muscle, and... Uh, overnight transformation coming soon, right, Fit? Uh, coming soon. Uh, you know, I mean, I wasn't muscular by any means, but I was slim, you know? And I was like, all right, sweet, this is the way to go, you know? And then that's when I met... That was me censoring her name, by the way. I'm going to do that every time. And uh, so we hung out, and... So far, he's, he's telling the truth. Yeah, so far. All right, let's keep watching. Uh, we hit it off super, super well. And, um, well, one night, we were staying out way too fucking late, like three in the fucking morning. And, you know, her mom was trying to get a hold of her. And, uh... When she didn't answer, that's when she really got into some deep shit. And so, um... Why wasn't she answering? I'm, bad. I'm, sure we'll, I'm sure we can figure it out here in a second. Like, we couldn't see each other for a while. Because she found out that, like, they, she grew up in a decently Christian home. Uh, despite the fact that her older sister was a whore. <laughs> nice to throw that in. Yeah, very nice. Uh, and uh, her mom was a total bitch, and her... Nah, yeah, that's what someone who's innocent would say. Uh-huh. Her dad cheated on her fucking mom. Um, so, not judging. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying it's kind of stupid to call yourself super Christian when that type of shit is going on at your house. Uh, you see, if he were truly innocent, he would not be throwing this many fucking arrows at them. Uh, but anyway... So then, um, she found out we were fooling around. Wait, do you remember that one Christian who tried to visit an island and he got fucking killed with a bunch of arrows? Because they didn't want him bringing diseases over to their island? Yeah, I do. Around, you know, I mean, we didn't have actual sex. We just, you know, fooled around. We didn't have actual sex. Well, rape doesn't count as actual sex, does it? Hey, we don't have any proof that he actually raped her. Plus, he says that she accused him of rape falsely. No. <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, hand jobs and such, you know, whatever the fuck, you know? And so I didn't talk to her for, like, the longest time, and I was worried, you know? I was like, damn, 
I really do miss her. And one day I saw her at her job and she was like, yo, why don't you just talk to my mom? You know, talk to my mom about us. And uh, I kind of... I kind of fucked some shit up. I didn't, like, uh, she was basically, like... You know, Chase told me that he randomly told him this story. Like, the first night that he ever met Chase when he was helping me move out of Chase's basement. Chase just said that Mikey just randomly started ranting about this very story that he's telling right now. Why would he just tell some random stranger about this? Why would he, like, and the thing is, he talks about this so much, and he's, he's mentioned it so many times over the years. It's very strange. So let me explain who Chase is. Uh, he was my roommate before Mikey, right? And uh, he kicked me out because I was an asshole. To, I gotta be honest, I was the asshole. I, I did something wrong. And you'll find out what I did wrong in the full Young Butt series when it comes out. But the thing is, according to Chase, when um, I was like packing up all my shit in the basement, Mikey just randomly started telling Chase about, well, the fucking, like, uh, the Margie story. And like, he's like, the thing is, Chase had never met Mikey before that point, nor had he heard the story about Mikey allegedly raping this woman. So for him to just bring it up out of nowhere, it really weirded Chase out and it gave Chase a bad taste in his mouth. Chase is like, Mikey's a creepy motherfucker. He always has a smile on his face. Chase said that when he entered Mikey's house when I first moved in with him, Chase got this really creepy feeling that he needed to get the fuck out of that house. But yeah, Chase said that Mikey just started telling him the story about Margie out of nowhere and Chase was like, why are you telling me this? And Mikey's like, well, I just don't want you to think I did it. Well, Chase is like, well, I never heard this story before you told me. It's like Mikey takes every opportunity he can get to tell that story to every stranger he meets. Why? Oh, and also, I said that this um, this documentary was going to include shit about incest. So let me go into that. Right? There was this girl who I'm going to leave unnamed that Mikey was romantically interested in. This girl was the best friend of one of my fangirls who we invited to our house. It's already getting bad. So I had a friend named Adam, right? Uh, so he was one of the admins of my Young Butt Piss Discord server, right? And one of the fans in there, well, uh, her and Adam, oh, uh, she was of age, by the way. I want to clarify that. So yeah, like um, her and Adam were the same fucking age. So they got, I mean, they were flirting every fucking day in the voice chat. And then eventually Adam wanted to meet her. So she drove all the way to, well, our house and we met her and her best friend so adam started dating this girl that he met in the young butt piss discord server and mikey started falling for this girl's best friend and this girl she had incest trauma right um apparently according to adam and his girlfriend mikey knew this and I saw a text. They showed it to me where Mikey was saying shit like, "Come sit in my lap, little girl. I'm gonna put my arm. I'm gonna put my hands around your throat, like some like BDSM type shit or whatever." Now, this is what made me rethink the rape story with Margie when I saw these texts. And even Adam and and his girlfriend were like, "I wonder if he actually did it." So then I got Mikey to fucking say that story twice, and he tells two different versions of the story. I have yet to play the second version of the story, mind you. And then it wasn't until I moved out that he told me the whole child molestation thing. So, th those are, yeah. So anyways, now you know that, right? <laughs> nice guy syndrome. This is where I fucked up. Her mom was like, was it really worth it? What, was it worth all of this? And my dumb ass... Hmm. Was it worth it? Was it really worth all of this? So if Mikey actually raped her, not saying he did, she probably would have told her mom. And maybe her mom didn't want her... I don't know. Here, let's keep listening. I answered yes when I know I should have said no, but I had my pride. So I don't know. I guess it just seemed like a smart idea at the time, you know, when, you know, you kind of tend to do stupid shit like that. You kind of tend to say stupid shit. Uh, when you're young and dumb, I'm, I still am young and dumb. Um, <laughs> so then... Hey, we should play the clip of him fucking chewing out Stephanie for not responding to his messages right after this clip. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. We just didn't talk. We just didn't talk for the longest time, and then one day I got a Snapchat. Oh, wait, no. We'll play this entire clip by itself without us reviewing it, and then we'll play the Stephanie clip. Oh, good idea. Uh, from her just out of nowhere one day. It was a blank snap, didn't say anything, and I was like, 
is that you? Like, yo, you, you want to talk? And nothing. Just left me on red. And I'm like, well, that's weird. So then, um, oh, what else happened? So I just moved on with my life. Everybody was telling me to just move on, even though I really didn't want to. Cause He's like, oh, what else happened? Like he had to try to remember a false rape accusation against him. It kind of seems like he was just trying to think of something to make up on the spot. Well, we don't know that. We can't prove that. Because I truly did like her. Like it was like how much we liked each other was something out of a fairy tale. Like not to sound fucking cliche or anything like that, but like I fuck man, I liked her. I fucking liked her. I've heard I've heard outside rumors that she was crazy. You know, a snowflake couldn't take criticism very well. I was like, man, she's, I mean, she's pretty cool to me. And so I was just like, you know, what if, you know, what if she just wants to fix things? So against everybody's fucking advice, I, I waited. And one day I, I went to the, I was at the gym and then she started an argument with me. She said, she said, oh, I heard you're best friends with my ex. How convenient. And I'm like, uh, first off, I'm not best friends with your ex. I only met the dude once, and I even told him I didn't want to be friends with him because you are her ex. Um, yeah, I didn't have... I, th I think he meant you are his ex. She, she didn't date a girl. I have much of a fucking spine back then. <laughs> but, um, and then... Uh, you know, she just started saying shit that wasn't true. She started questioning my manhood and, you know, just kept saying, oh, if you would have just grown a pair and fucking talked to my mom the second time, like I asked, we wouldn't be in this mess. And I was like, uh, why does it feel like that never happened? Probably because it didn't. It, it, it kind of feels like he's making, cause he's, I mean, look at, he's looking off the screen. He's looking off the screen when he's saying that, like he's thinking of what to say next. What does it mean? Okay, so the thing is, he's looking that way, which means he would be looking to the left. So what is a glance up and to the left supposedly means a person is telling the truth? Oh, where? Really? Whereas a glance to the upper right signals deceit. However, new research thoroughly debunks these notions. Oh, as it turns out, you can't smell a liar by where he looks. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Well, we can't use that, can we? Well, yeah, we're not, we're not, we might not be able to use that, but we can already tell he's lying. Doesn't matter where he's looking. We already know. Ugh. So, I don't think ever told him to talk to her mom. For some reason, that part feels like bullshit to me. But the part where she says, was it worth it to him? And he says, yes, that part sounds like it was true. It does, I don't, it, the thing is, you can't tell he's lying by where he's looking. I mean, that's already been debunked. You can't tell. But somehow, I, f I know he's lying about that part. All right, here we go. Yeah, I realized at the time it kind of wasn't worth it, you know? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have him retell this story and say that I accidentally lost the footage. And we're going to compare both stories together and see what changes. That's a good idea. Yeah, we're going to do that. And I called her some names that I shouldn't have. Um, I will say that. I did say some things that were kind of out of line. I will admit to that. Um, but she did lie to me about the fact that she uh, was a vir uh, wasn't a virgin. She said she was a virgin and then later said that she wasn't. You know, I remember, I have a vague memory. Actually, it's not a vague memory. It's a very vivid memory. I remember when... Uh, me, Jesse, and Mikey hung out in 2018. It was like it was like during the five month period where I threw all my videos on private. And I remember hanging out with Mikey and Jesse, and Jesse jokingly said that Mikey would tell women that he was a virgin just to sleep with them. Hmm. And I think that's where it started. Um, that's where the whole "don't lie to me" thing started. Because I mean, you you kind of can't lie about something that hefty. You know what I mean? You can't just say. Oh yeah, I'm a virgin, and when, when you're really not, I don't know. Yeah, as soon as Mikey gets home, I'm going to hand him the camera and have him retell this story. But I'm going to lie to him and say that I lost this footage. And we're going to see just how much changes the second time around. 
just kind of kind of violates a level of trust you know what I mean so uh, and then so that huge ass argument gets out of the way and uh, and then one of my at the time best friends hits me up and she says she says yeah I just got in an argument with her about you and I'm like oh great what was said and uh, she basically said uh, she basically said that if her boyfriend sees her, he will have fucking words to say, meaning they were on my side, and they. Wait, what? Hits me up and she says, she says, yeah, I just got in an argument with her about you, and I'm like, oh great, what was said, and uh, she basically said, uh, she basically said that if her boyfriend sees her he will have fucking words to say, meaning they were on my side. He's lying right there. I don't have any evidence to back it up. I can tell he's fucking lying right here. Somehow, somehow I know he's lying right here. I can't, I can't explain how I know. He's lying about this. This, this part never happened. This part did not happen. Oh my God, oh, God. And they know for a fact that she just pushed me to my absolute limit that day. He's making up shit. He's making, he's adding, he's adding shit to the story. There's two parts in this story that, that are completely made up on the spot. And the rest is true, but he's leaving big gaps out. Oh, no. Okay, for no valid reason. And uh, her sister then said, uh, if you talk to her like that again, I'll rip your dick off. And I was like, at the time... This part didn't happen either, somehow I can tell. I just wanted her to leave me alone. Uh, what I should have done was you know, fought back and say, fuck you, bitch, you're not going to do any such thing. Uh, but I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm, I mean, I mean, yeah, why didn't you say that? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done facing the drama with all this bullshit. Just let her have what she wants. I'll just be like, yeah, you got it. I won't talk to her ever again, you know? And I held true to that because I didn't even want to talk to her again anyway. And then so, uh, I hear down the vine about a few months later, uh, this was back in 2017, like, reminder, I hear, I hear down from the grapevine that uh, she tried spreading rumors that I raped her. And um, I had a lot of friends at BHS at the time. Like a lot, a fucking lot. And that's all thanks to Jesse Edgecombe. If it wasn't, actually, if it wasn't for Jesse Edgecombe or Reese, I probably wouldn't have any friends at BHS. So, uh, thanks, guys. You're and <laughs> and uh, so. The psychopathic fake laugh. Um, so, one of my friends who didn't even go to BHS, when he heard these rumors, he was like, like a re reminder, I have I have a bunch of friends telling me this information, and so I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my god, am I gonna go to court? Am it like, well, what the fuck's gonna happen? Because I didn't even do anything. Like I did not. The Look, to be fair, there are men who have been falsely accused, and they have been prosecuted for it. But Mikey never gets he never gets scared of something unless he's actually guilty. I know him well enough to say that. The most we did. Like, guys, I'm going to tell you right now, the most we did is hand jobs and blow jobs and making out. Literally. Oh, you sucked her dick? Lucky. <laughs> no, but seriously. Literally all we did. <laughs> Literally all we did. You know, no actual sex was. Also, uh, I want to clarify is not trans, by the way. <laughs> was involved. So I'm panicking. I'm scared shitless. I think he's here. I heard a car door shut. Well, let's see if he's here really quick. Let's fucking make sure he's not here. Is he parked out there? No, he is not. He is not yet home. Good, good. Now let's go finish the fucking video. Okay, so I'm, I'm sensing quite a few lies and a lot of gaps in his story. I can't wait to have him come home and tell the story a second time so I can see which how many parts, how many things he changes. And eventually I come to realize that everybody dismissed it because she had a habit of doing this to all of her other exes. So no one believed her from the very start. Mm, this doesn't feel true right here. I, 
I don't know. I don't know. It feels weird right here. Something about this feels weird. Like the, what we just said right there. And everybody knew me and everybody knew that I would never do something like that. And uh, one of my friends, uh, he and I were hanging out one day and he was like, yeah, you know, as soon as I heard those rumors, I was like, wait a minute, Michael? The same Michael that hid his Nintendo DS underneath his fucking pillows in sixth grade? This part, this part doesn't even feel true. Because I remember before, when he would tell the story before, he said, he said a guy named Matt Graber said, Michael, the guy who would bring his DSi to school? But right now he's saying, Michael, the guy who hid a, his Nintendo DS under the pillow? So it switches from a, bringing a DSi to school to hiding a Nintendo DS under his pillow. Hmm. The thing is, I don't have footage of him saying bring... What we're, I don't have footage of him saying that Matt Graber said, Matt, Mike, he would never rape anybody. He used to take his DSi to school. I don't have footage of him saying that, but trust me when I say that was his first version that he ever told me. It changes right here. Why does, why does the DSi change to a Nintendo DS, and why does bringing it to school change to hiding it under his pillow? Hmm. Nah, nah, could not be him. Could not be him. So he made that part up all by himself. Did Matt... I wonder if Matt Graber ever even said that. Him. So, uh, to the people that believed me, and... He might have, but it, something about this feels so weird. Why did it, why did it change? Uh, stayed with me through all of that. I just want to say thank you. Like, you guys have been very good. And, and notice at the beginning of the clip, he's like, I would like to tell the full story so people d know I didn't do it. Good friends since day. Because he even says that the fact that Callie said, Look, I'm not using my tears to gain sympathy, which would indicate that that's absolutely what she was doing. We can apply Michael's logic to himself. Hey, fucking one. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, and Claire, t fuck both of you. I hope both of you rot in hell for uh, trying to slander my name. And uh, Claire, you're a fat fucking whore and no one likes you. That's something someone innocent would say. Okay, so we're going to have him tell the story a second time and say that we accidentally deleted the footage. All right, so basically, um, when I was in college, I was... Put your hand on over the mic right on the top there, like, or else it'll film muffled. This is where the mic is right here, so make sure you're not looping on that. Okay. Pardon me, guys. I'm too retarded to hold the camera. Um, so, where to begin? So, pretty much... When I was in college, I was pretty chubby. Like, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. I was super depressed, didn't know what I was doing. Um, so eventually, one day, I just snapped out of it. It was like a light switch. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get fit as fuck. So that's what I did. I got a membership at Sportsworks with a few former friends of mine. And, uh, <clears throat> and I went to work. And over, over time, it was damn near overnight that I started shedding the weight, gaining a little bit of muscle. And, uh, you know, I mean, I wasn't muscular by any means, but I was slim, you know? And I was like, all right, sweet. This is the way to go, you know? And then that's when I met. And uh, so we hung out. And uh, we hit it off super, super well. And, um, well... One night, we were staying out way too fucking late, like three in the fucking morning, and, you know, her mom was trying to get a hold of her, and uh, when she didn't answer, that's when she really got into some deep shit, and so, um, like, we couldn't see each other for a while, because she found out that, like, they, she grew up in a decently Christian home, uh despite the fact that her older sister was a whore <laughs> and uh, her mom was a total bitch and her dad cheated on her fucking mom. Um, so, not judging. I'm just saying it's kind of stupid to call yourself super Christian when that type of shit is going on at your house. Uh, but anyway, so then... Um, she found out we were fooling around, you know. I mean, we didn't have actual sex. We just, you know, fooled around, you know, like, uh, 
you know, hand jobs and such, you know, whatever the fuck, you know? And so I didn't talk to her for like the longest time. And I was worried, you know, I was like, damn, I really do miss her. And one day I saw her at her job and she was like, yo, why don't you just talk to my mom? You know, talk to my mom about us. And uh, I kind of, I kind of fucked some shit up. I didn't like, uh, she was basically like, this is where I fucked up. Her mom was like, was it really worth it? What, was it worth all of this? And my dumb ass answered yes, when I know I should have said no, but I had my pride. So I don't know, I guess it just seemed like a smart idea at the time, you know, when, you know, you kind of tend to do stupid shit like that. You kind of tend to say stupid shit uh, when you're young and dumb. I'm, I still am young and dumb. Um, <laughs> so then we just didn't talk. We just didn't talk for the longest time. And then one day I got a Snapchat uh, from her just out of nowhere one day. It was a blank snap, didn't say anything. And I was like, is that you? Like, yo, you, you want to talk? And nothing. Just left me on red. And I'm like, well, that's weird. So then, um, oh, what else happened? So I just moved on with my life. Everybody was telling me to just move on, even though I really didn't want to, because I truly did like her. Like, it was... Like, how much we liked each other was something out of a fairy tale. Like, not to sound fucking cliche or anything like that, but... Like, I... Fuck, man. I liked her. I fucking liked her. I've heard... I've heard outside rumors that she was crazy. You know, a snowflake. Couldn't take criticism very well. I was like, man, she's... I mean, she's pretty cool to me. And so I was just like, you know, what if? You know, what if she just wants to fix things? So, against everybody's fucking advice, I, I waited. And one day, I, I, went to the, I was at the gym, and then she started an argument with me. She said, she said, oh, I heard you're best friends with my ex. How convenient. And I'm like, uh, first off, I'm not best friends with your ex. I only met the dude once, and I even told him I didn't want to be friends with him because you are her ex. Um, yeah, I didn't have much of a fucking spine back then, <laughs> but, um, and then, uh, you know, she just started saying shit that wasn't true, she started questioning my manhood, and, you know, just kept saying, oh, if you would have just grown a pair and fucking talked to my mom the second time, like I asked, we wouldn't be in this mess, and I was like, uh, yeah, I realized at the time it kind of wasn't worth it, you know? And I called her some names that I shouldn't have. Um, I will say that. I did say some things that were kind of out of line. I will admit to that. Um, but she did lie to me about the fact that she uh, was a vir uh, wasn't a virgin. She said she was a virgin and then later said that she wasn't. And I think that's where it started. Um, that's where the whole don't lie to me thing started. Because, I mean... You, you kind of can't lie about something that hefty, you know what I mean? You can't just say, oh yeah, I'm a virgin, and when, when you're really not, I don't know, it's just kind of kind of violates a level of trust, you know what I mean? So, uh, and then, so that huge ass argument gets out of the way, and, uh, and then one of my at the time best friends hits me up and she says, she says, yeah, I just got in an argument with her about you. And I'm like, oh, great, what was said? And uh, she basically said uh, she basically said that if her boyfriend sees her, he will have fucking words to say, meaning they were on my side. And they know for a fact that she just pushed me to my absolute limit that day for no valid reason. And uh, her sister then said... Uh, if you talk to her like that again, I'll rip your dick off. And I was like, at the time, I just wanted her to leave me alone. Uh, what I should have done was, you know, fought back and say, fuck you, bitch. You're not going to do any such thing. Uh, but I just thought, you know what? I'm, I'm done. I'm done facing the drama with all this bullshit. Just let her have what she wants. I'll just be like, yeah, you got it. I won't talk to her ever again, you know? And I held true to that because I didn't even want to talk to her again anyway. And then so, uh, 
I hear down the vine about a few months later, uh, this was back in 2017, reminder, I hear, I hear down from the grapevine that uh, she tried spreading rumors that I raped her. And um, I had a lot of friends at BHS at the time. Like a lot. A fucking lot. And that's all thanks to Jesse Edgecombe. If it wasn't, actually, if it wasn't for Jesse Edgecombe or Reese, I probably wouldn't have any friends at BHS. So, uh, thanks, guys. And, You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, so, um, so one of my friends who didn't even go to BHS, when he heard these rumors, he was like, like a re reminder, I have, I have a bunch of friends telling me this information. And so I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, am I going to go to court? And like, well, what the fuck's going to happen? Because I didn't even do anything. Like I did not. The most we did, like guys, I'm going to tell you right now, the most we did is hand jobs and blow jobs and making out literally all we did. <laughs> literally all we did. You know, no actual sex was involved. So I'm panicking, I'm scared shitless, and eventually I come to realize that everybody dismissed it because she had a habit of doing this to all of her other exes. So no one believed her from the very start, and everybody knew me, and everybody knew that I would never do something like that. And uh, one of my friends, uh, he and I were hanging out one day, and he was like, yeah, you know, as soon as I heard those rumors, I was like, wait a minute, Michael? The same Michael that hid his Nintendo DS underneath his fucking pillows in sixth grade? Nah, nah, could not be him. Could not be him. So, uh, to the people that believed me and uh, stayed with me through all of that, I just want to say thank you. Like, you guys have been very good friends since day fucking one. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, and Claire, fuck both of you. I hope both of you rot in hell for uh, trying to slander my name. And uh, Claire, you're a fat fucking whore and no one likes you. I got a shit. Okay, we're gonna call Mikey really quick. Ugh, fucking shit. God damn it, why is he not answering? Dude. Hold yeah. on, Reese. Yeah, Mikey. Oh. Yeah, it's so weird, man. <laughs> See, dude. Oh, fuck yeah, I love Chevys. Hell yeah. What's up, Reese? Hey, Mikey. Yeah. So I, I kind of fucked up, right? What'd you do? Um, so I was like clearing fucking files off of my hard drive, like editing the new episode, and I I deleted uh, um, the footage where you talk about um, by accident. Uh, would you be willing to like retell the fucking story on camera? It was a long ass clip, but I kind of yeah. I, I was trying to delete all the footage that I had already edited, right? And I accidentally because I'm you know how I'm editing everything out of order. Yeah. yeah, so I just accidentally fucking deleted it. I was like, I needed that to, like, put in my fucking, like, next episode, and now it's just fucking gone. And the thing is, the thing is, that, like, the, like, the thing is, it was such a big file that it didn't even go to my recycle bin. So it's not even fucking in there. Yeah, there was, like, no recovering that shit. So could you, like, I'll just, like, I'll get my camera fully charged by the time you get home. You just fucking just start recording the fucking story again. Uh, so here's the issue. I'm done with work, but I got somewhere to be. Uh, but afterwards, <clears throat> excuse me. But afterwards, uh, if I got time, yeah, I'll retell the story. But just remember, my throat is fucking sore and fucking dry. Right. So. Right. All right. So it's come to my attention that uh, upon editing, Reese has accidentally deleted the footage about my story of like my time with her when I was dating her um so I'm going to tell it again and I am extremely exhausted from working out creatine 
Yeah. Nigga. And I have to take a fucking shower. But I will. <clears throat> yeah. Nigga. But like, <clears throat> but like last time, I will go into detail. And I don't want to miss anything because stories like this require crucial detail. So, it happened back in 2017. Um, I met her through some mutual friends of ours. And uh, I was like, well, she's pretty cute. Uh, but at the time, she had a boyfriend. So I decided to not pursue anything. And at the time, I was still... Um, not the most attractive person ever. So I was like, okay, I'm going to work on myself. And so I started working out. Oh, and by the way, I didn't know her name at the time. So I started working out, started taking better care of myself. And one day, <clears throat> my friend told me about her, about how she was looking for a boyfriend and I just so happened to be looking for a girlfriend. So she set the whole thing up, and uh, we hit it off, like, insanely well. And um, over time, throughout that time, we hit it off. We are damn near inseparable. <clears throat> you know, her and I had a lot of passions, she was into music and dancing. She was a ballet dancer. And I didn't necessarily know where my life was heading at the time. But it was still a good year for me. 2017 was a good year for me regardless. Because, you know, I started taking better care of myself. And it was just an amazing year. And, and it wasn't just because of her. It was, it was because of... <clears throat> My best friend Jesse, you know, we spent <laughs> we spent a lot of time together. We were hanging out all the time, and that was when I met all of his friends. And so it, it was just amazing, you know, a great year. And <clears throat> so we are. Um, I, I don't want to say we were in love with each other because it was a little too early for that. But she accidentally dropped the L word one day, and I said it back, stupidly. But, you know, when you're young and dumb, do you really care? Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm still young and dumb. Uh, I still got a lot to learn. But at the time, I didn't care. Everything just felt right with her. And... Um, one day she stayed over at my house way too late, like 3 a.m. <clears throat> and her parents wanted her, home, wanted her home way sooner than that. Well, that didn't happen, you know, because she wanted to keep spending time with me. And of course I didn't protest, so I let her stay. Well, eventually her mom called her. And she knew immediately she was in trouble. Yeah. Nigga! So I dropped her off, and she lectured her right in front of me. And I'm pretty sure she lectured me, too. Um, which she had no right to do. But whatever. Um, so she wasn't allowed to see me for a bit. And it was around this time, she st her mom started looking through her phone. And found out that we were fooling around, you know, you know, just you know, what relationships do. Well, that was it. That was it. I could not see her again after that. And one day I saw her at her place of work, because we I, I agreed to see her there, and she said, she said, could you talk to my mom about us? And I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and the thing is, her mom is a little scary to deal with. But I, nevertheless, I persisted. Or, not persisted. I uh, went through with it. Um, so, she asked me, 
like her mom, it, it was a long lecture, long. She cried like four or five times and talked about how her mom was just a wonderful person and how she, she basically doesn't want to admit the fact that her daughter's growing up and she's not a fucking kid anymore. And uh, she asked me, she said, so all the things you guys did, was it worth it? And again, me being young and stupid, I said yes, even though I should have said no. But I had my pride back then, so I stood my ground. Which I don't know if I should really apologize for, but at that point in time, I guess I should have, but I don't know. Um, so... Again, that further solidified that I would not be able to see her. And, uh, oh, before I continue, she did say that, uh, that my parents would probably be, quote, fucking ashamed of me for what happened. Uh, which is a pretty disrespectful thing to say to me, because she doesn't know my life. She doesn't know my parents. Uh... You know, she just had no right to say that stuff to me. And uh, so I couldn't see her. And she went to ballet camp for a bit. And she was using like a, a like a, an, I, an iPod to message me. And she wasn't allowed to have her phone at that camp for uh, because of the camp's rules. But they were allowed to send letters. So I sent her a letter every day because of how much I missed her because of how much I wanted to be with her. And I just wanted everything to be okay again. And I was depressed, because I couldn't see her. Well, um... It, so, after that, uh, I didn't hear from her for the longest time. Because uh, her mom found out that she was using that, uh, using that iPod. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm still going to wait. And, you know, everybody, fucking everybody told me not to wait for her. Even my best friends at the time told me to not wait for her. But I didn't listen. I wanted to. Because I thought, you know, there'd be, you know, there'd, there'd be a, a rainbow after the storm so to speak, you know, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, sadly, that's not how it happened. Um, the, so before, again, sorry, before I continue, one of the best moments I had with her was when I took her to prom. She was dressed up in a nice dress. I had a nice suit and we spent all night together we crashed at a friend of at a at a friend's house and she just laid in my arms all night and it was the best thing ever i <laughs> uh honestly like honestly to this day, I still haven't felt that exact same feeling. And, um, so, progressing now. Uh, so I didn't hear from her until, uh, until one day, she, she, uh, <clears throat> sent me a Snapchat, and I opened it, it was a blank snap, and I was like or Margie, as I called her, I, I said, is that you? And left me on red. Nothing after that. So I was confused. I was like, well, why, <clears throat> why would you send that but not say anything in return? That's just weird. So about a month goes by. I'm at the gym working out, and I get a message from her accusing me of being best friends with one of her exes. Which was not the case. I told her that I only met the dude once, and I even told him that I had no interest in being friends with him because of her. But she chose not to believe me. 
and uh, she chose not to listen to anything I had to say to defend myself. I defended myself over and over and over, and even told her that everybody told me to drop her. Um, but I chose not to. She did, That didn't matter. And it got to a point to where she insulted my manhood and said, if you would have just grown a pair and talked to my mother a second time, which she didn't want me to do that, but I chose not to. Because uh, eventually I was like, this is stupid. I, uh, I'm done. Even I had a breaking point. So that was when I snapped. <clears throat> I, I called her some things I shouldn't have. I called her a bitch. I called her a slut that those words should not have left my mouth. Um, so for that, uh, you know, I am sorry for that. But the thing about it is, is that she just would not listen. Just would not listen to reason. And she pushed me to the point to where I called her out for lying to me about being a virgin. She wasn't. And I lied to her and told her I'm totally okay with that. Which, again, shouldn't have done that. Uh, <clears throat> but I pulled that card on her because she decided to stoop to a really low level. And I foolishly stooped to hers. <clears throat> so, eventually, uh, everything ended. I blocked her. And the next day, her sister messaged me and said, don't talk to her again or else I will rip your dick off. You know, a bunch of empty threats. Uh, you know, she wasn't going to fucking do anything, but I wanted her off of my back um, because, like, I, I was just tired of it. And then she tried talking to my friend who set us up in the first place about how I'm an awful person when my friend stood up to bat for me and said, that's not how he is. You pushed him to that. And her boyfriend, my other friend, said that if he saw her at school the next day, he is going to have words with her. And to this day, I will always be grateful for them standing up, to, standing up for me like that. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> and then... <clears throat> Sorry, I have a, I have allergies and it is killing me right now. But um <clears throat> So then uh months go by didn't hear anything from her until one day I'm hanging out with my friend Matt Graber and he said, "So, did you hear about what's been going on recently?" And I said, "No, what?" And he said, "Tried spreading rape rumors about you. So that's when my heart stopped because that's a very serious <clears throat> that's a very serious issue. Uh, I did not rape her. Uh, the most we did sexual was she gave me a few blowjobs and a few hand jobs. And I felt her up and but like we we never had actual sex. I was still a virgin at the time. Um, so immediately, naturally, I protested. I said, I didn't, though. And he said, yeah, everybody, everybody knows that, Mike. In fact, when I heard it, I was like, wait, Michael? The same Michael that hid his Nintendo DS underneath his pillows when he was in middle school? No way. No way Michael would do that. So, <clears throat> once again... It was great having friends that had my back uh, because that was a scary situation and I was even more angry at her for doing that. But, like, fast forward to late 2017, early 2018. I'm sitting outside with my best friend Jesse and his at-the-time girlfriend. And I said, you know, I'm going to be honest despite everything that happened, I still, I still missed Margie. And they were like, really? 
like, why? And I said, what we had was good before everything fell apart. And, uh, I don't know. I guess in a way, I guess I still kind of miss her. Even though I know I shouldn't. Because it was just awful. I... I do miss her a little bit. I don't know why. I don't want to. But I do. And there's... Um, it's gonna take a bit, I guess. <laughs> this was a while ago. 2017, you know? Six years later. <clears throat> so... Uh... Yeah. Uh, I just want you to know that I still am very much mad. I, I still am very much so mad at you for doing that. And you ought to be ashamed for doing that. Um, that's a really low level to stoop to. And apparently she did this with all of her exes. And uh, Claire... <clears throat> You are a fat, annoying bitch, and it's no wonder you don't have any friends. And the friends that do have you don't genuinely care about you. Um, I really want to say the absolute worst things to you right now, but I can't because of my lingering feelings. And that makes me more angry than what you actually did. So, uh... I guess if there's anything I gotta say, it's... I hope wherever you are, you're, you're happy and you're okay. And, uh... Yeah, I guess that's it. There's a lot more I want to say about it, but I know I can't. I guess I'm just... I don't know. I guess I didn't really think about it until now. Like, why? Why did it... Why did that have to happen the way it did? Why were we so stupid? Why didn't I... Why didn't you just... Why didn't we just go to your house when you were supposed to. I don't know. I guess I... no other excuse for it other than the fact we were young and stupid, you know? <laughs> There's no other words for it. So, uh... Take care wherever you are and uh, you still ought to be ashamed for what you've done because that could have destroyed my life completely so thanks for that Reese doesn't know that I'm making this video uh, he gave me his camera to talk about Margaret Tillotson. <clears throat> but I just want to say that to the date, uh, you have one more day till, till, you, uh, till you move to another town. And I just want to say that I cannot tell you how happy I am for you, Reese. I genuinely do hope you make it big. I genuinely do hope everything works out for you. It just seems like yesterday we were attending church group. Um, you know, 
the night I told, the day I told you that <clears throat> I needed you out of my house, I was scared shitless to tell you. I, I was scared. Because I thought, I don't know, I just thought you were going to put me in the series in a negative light. It's your boy, Young Butt Pierce. And this song goes out to my boy Mikey. Yeah, hey yo Mikey. You fucking likey. 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 This song has to go on for at least a minute. Even though I'm saying the same lyric over and over, but if it ain't a So let's talk about who Stephanie Carlson is. Stephanie Carlson was a pissciple, a butt pisser. That's what I call my fans, by the way. She was in the Young Butt Piss Discord server. The same one that, well, Adam met his, uh, uh, met the love of his life in, right? The thing is, Mikey was getting a thing for Stephanie as well. And then shortly after the whole, you know, incest creepy text situation, Adam and his girlfriend texted Stephanie and they told her that they believe Mikey may have raped his ex because of the whole incest sexting uh, uh, scenario, right? So that's why Stephanie stopped talking to Mikey all of a sudden. Earlier today, I wrote a Ron DeSantis diss track with Stephanie. Stephanie Carlson, same last name as the one who got fucking... Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why people watch Fox News. But anyways, so Stephanie has been ignoring you for weeks, right? Uh, yeah. Say what you want to say to Stephanie right now. You have six minutes on that fucking memory card. I, um, I have six minutes left on my memory card. Make it quick. Uh, I'm actually pretty hurt. Uh, well, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I I'm actually not. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> oh, that's what you think about Stephanie? Yeah, uh, I wasn't really hurt, but we did bond over Chris Chan, which I thought was, you know, pretty cool. Um, I, and I thought she was pretty cool to talk to. Uh, She's actually funny. Yeah, and so, you know, over time, I, I would just talk to her about, you know, the funniest shit about Chris Chan. But over time, like, she hit me up out of nowhere on April 5th and asked me how I was doing, and I'm like, Oh, well, shit, this is a nice surprise. You know, she's never hit me up, you know, like that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good, you know. And, and then uh, I realized that whenever I messaged her after that, she would just ghost me. It's your boy, Pac-Man. Waka waka. I'm talking to these sexy-ass ghosts. But they leave me in the friend zone I'm always chasing ghosts and begging them to date me please But I wish they were chasing after me Always eating pellets and cherries I really want a ghost to marry But I just keep on getting fucking ghosted And every time I post it I keep on getting roasted But one day I'll meet my Mrs. Pac-Man Waka Waka My name is Pac-Man I'm talking to these sexy ass ghosts But they leave me in the friend zone Begging them to date me please But I wish these ghosts were chasing after me And basically Reese told me what happened today and I was like, well, she, since, since her and Bella are best friends now, it probably wouldn't surprise me if that's why she was ghosting me. Bella probably said something, um, which is fine, because I know I did nothing wrong. Right. I really didn't. Um, 
I even have messages to back that up. Right. And uh, so it, it just sucks because I actually got along with her. Uh, but since you want to play that game, Stephanie, if you think, if you think that uh, y you know you're not a really level-headed person. I thought for a while you would be. I thought you would assess the situation between Bella, Adam, and I. But it's clear you only take one side of the story, which is a lot of what your people seem to do. And uh, that's wait, what, oh wait, what's your people? What's your people? Fucking mentally disabled liberals. Um, where, well, where do you sit on the political spectrum, Mikey? I fucking hate all of them. Okay. And so, in fact, I, I'm a little bit on the left myself, but only for workers' unions and equal rights. That's about it. I'm not really extreme about it. So believe me when I say, you yourself are not fucking level-headed. And on top of that, I just want to say this now. Uh, it kind of sucks that you chose to do that. Um, I mean, we didn't really even know each other that well, so it doesn't really matter. But it, it kind of sucks because you chose to take one side of the story, and it's pretty funny, actually, that you would take the side of an incel and a femcel, uh, both who have never been in a relationship in their lives, one who's severely mentally fucking disabled, and one who's a fucking fat cuck idiot. That's fucking hilarious. Take the side of the people who don't have their shit together over someone who does, or someone who is on their way to. Stephanie, you chose the wrong fucking side. You really did. Um, they're not level-headed thinkers. Adam, he fucking removed three of his best friends for a girl who's not even attractive and really fucked up in the head. So fucked up that she belongs in a mental institution. But guess what? It's not going to happen because her therapist can't say anything. And uh, another thing I want to say is, shame on you. Shame on Adam and Bella. Like, seriously. Stephanie, you should seriously be ashamed of yourself for trying to get information out of Reese. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's why you hit me up out of nowhere. To genuinely see how I was actually doing. Newsflash, cunt. I'm actually doing pretty good for myself. I'm not hung up on those fat fucking whales. And guess what? I'm also not hung up on you. Because guess what? I actually have a life to live. Oh, by the way, people who go to college for filmography... Aside from, aside from a few people, like Reese, who's actually making something of himself, I wouldn't be surprised if you failed so hard you switched it to a fucking woman's studies class. She's a dumb cunt with B cups and no butt. She calls herself insanely intelligent, but she's insanely irrelevant. Step on me, yeah, fuck you, Stephanie. You came to me as a friend when you're just a fan turned mutual instead. You're a dumb fucking bitch who thinks she is intelligent. You chose to be a film major, but you're not a filmmaker. You'd make a better cam. Or, yeah, that's what you should use a cam for Nobody's gonna pay to see your movies But they pay to see your nudies I'm a better filmmaker than you'll ever be You'll never make a film as good as me Cause I've perfected Minecraft But you've perfected Minecraft Just because you hate right-wing tards Doesn't make you fucking smart You're not wise Your brain is peanut sized stop using all that fucking hair dye cause it's seeping through your skull and frying your fucking mind you have no skills or talent you're an anti-talented you're not a fucking film major but you're an you're, 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 you're a shitty filmmaker fuck you stephanie switched your fucking major like a fucking idiot fuck you and your fucking people you want to bash Republicans and conservatives? Which, b reminder, I'm not that side. Your side is no fucking better. Remember that. Is that all? Mm-hmm. You know it would be nice if we had fucking Kool-Aid for you to drink right after that. That's symbolism. You know, like drinking the, you ever heard like drinking the Kool-Aid? 
Like From that. Jonestown? Why are you still recording if the memory card's full? I'm waiting for it to fucking beep. I don't know why. It says, oh. it says zero hours and zero minutes. It should be ending any second now. Well, I guess we'll keep talking until it ends, huh? So, uh, Stephanie, huh? She should really ought to be ashamed of herself for having one-sided thinking. You know... <sighs> hey, bitch. How does it feel knowing Reese is actually making something of himself? And you probably won't. <laughs> the only thing she'll amount to is being in the Young Butt Piss series. And being an emo girl. But even then, you're still not very attractive. That's a lie, but get it all out. And then flash forward to a few months ago, I found out what Mikey did to a bunch of children, and I told Stephanie about it, right? And Stephanie was going to have a, a, her own little segment in every episode of the Young Butt Piss series called Young Steph Piss, because she asked me, she was like, hey, does the Young Butt Piss docuseries pass the Bechdel test? And I was like, it sure doesn't. You should have your own segment in every episode. But now I'm realizing that even though I was going to have a young Steph Piss segment in every episode, or at least once every season, it still wouldn't pass the Bechdel test because she was still talking about men in her segments. She was uh, she was going to dedicate every segment to shredding one of her exes because people say that she looks like Ramona Flowers. It's your girl, Young Steph Piss. Young Steph Piss. Yeah. The first thing I need to clarify is that I am nothing like Ramona Flowers. However, I do have a bunch of shitty exes, and I'm going to be trolling them. First evil ex we're going to be trolling is, um, not Eric Cartman. I'm not a fucking pedophile. It's going to be my boyfriend in eighth we grade. We were both in eighth grade at the time. It's okay. It's okay, all right? I'm not my Now, let's get into it. Tomorrow, though, because I have to sleep. And now... We address my own pedophile allegations. Oh yeah. There are young butt piss pedophile allegations. Groomer accusations. However, Stephanie. Hey Stephanie. The thing is, Stephanie, you are now a part of this, right? You should not have DM'd me what you DM me because now you're gonna be caught up in the crossfire. Stephanie? The last thing you ever DM'd me before you blocked me on Instagram was, don't DM kids. The fact that you blocked me after DMing me this means you must have seen something, right? So it's best for me to address whatever pedophile allegations I have now rather than later. So Stephanie Carlson, what did you see to make you say that to me. Me and everyone watching wants to know what you saw. Like, I made a whole one hour documentary exposing a pedophile. So I think everyone watching wants to know whether I'm a pedophile too, right? Stephanie, I want you to come forward with whatever the fuck you saw and post it. Whatever you saw. I'm guessing they're, they're whatever you saw were screenshots someone sent you, right? Do not blur out their username, do not blur out their name or their face or anything. The reason why I'm requesting you do not blur anything is because I want to make sure that whatever you saw, you made sure it was real before you blocked me. Because when we see whatever the fuck you saw, we're going to be able to tell whether it was real or not. Trust me, I'm 98% sure I'm innocent. So Stephanie, Post what you saw. Hopefully it was real. Right? Everybody watching this wants to see. Because I'm bringing it up right now. Why did you DM me, don't DM kids, and then block me right after? Clearly you saw something. So, Stephanie, Carlson, post what you saw. We all want to know the young butt piss pedophile allegations. Now, the reason why this documentary is called Mandolin Mikey is because Mikey was practicing playing the mandolin the entire time I live with him. Now, I'm not going to play any of that footage. I'm going to save all that footage for the Young Butt Piss series itself. Because it's, it's really not that important. I, I already have enough fucking filler in this goddamn documentary. Right? But yeah, Mikey was practicing the mandolin. And in the clips in the Young Butt Piss series, if you listen carefully, you can hear what note he plays most of the time. Can you guess? So, 
Yeah, that's why it's called Mandolin Mikey. It's like he wanted to get fucking caught. However, I do have a theory as to what Stephanie may have seen. So, I addressed these allegations almost a year ago on TikTok. So, let's play myself addressing the allegations that I think Stephanie might say. But there is a big possibility that, that whatever Stephanie posts is going to be fucking fabricated. So, anyways, let's play me addressing the first, um, the first groomer allegation I ever got. Now, now, I need to address my own groomer allegations. Pause the screen and read this entire thing. Because I explain the situation pretty perfectly in this screenshot. This is something I posted to my Instagram, and it, it was posted 30 weeks ago. Um, and yeah, I posted on my Instagram story and I kept it as a highlight on my Instagram profile. Just uh, nip it in the butt now. Now I'm going to show you the DMs between me and this person. Not going to say their name, but they do use they, them pronouns, so we're going to respect that. Go ahead and pause this and read it. This is the DM I sent to this fan. And it, and it is it is partly my fault. I, I engaged with... The thing is, I would reply to every single tweet they tweeted at me. In fact, when I first started blowing up with Young Butt Piss, I, I would reply to every DM. Reply to every tweet. Every single thing. Um... And eventually, um, uh, someone told me, you don't have to respond to everything. I was like, you're right. I, th th there's a lot of unspoken rules. One unspoken rule being, don't reply to every single DM, right? Uh, this fan sent me a picture uh, where she cut the word butt piss into her arm. She thought I'd appreciate that. Um, the thing is, I wasn't scarred or traumatized. I've seen worse things on the internet, but I didn't. It respond, didn't engage with it, didn't want to block her because if I blocked her, then she'd know that I saw it. I also had another fan send me a video of him playing with a dead squirrel. The, uh, the, the thing is, that's not even the most bizarre part. It's the fact that someone was filming him doing it, which means that there's two of them. Back to the, the, uh, the, the fan who was a minor. Um, I decided to post this on my Instagram story. Obviously, this fan saw it, got very upset. They screenshotted the messages that they sent me on their Sock Puppet account. They, they, they sent it to me through Twitter DMs. Um, and then they said, I find it ironic that you posted Spotify lyrics that I typed. Okay, so the thing is, this person somehow found a way to like type lyrics for my songs. But the thing is, I posted lyrics from a song I made called Parasocial Butt Piss. And I thought it was funny because I'm like, who would get obsessed with a guy named Butt Piss? It's funny. And then uh, this person turned out to be exactly that. And the ironic part is, they don't even realize that the lyrics that they typed for that song were about people like them. Again, Stephanie, post whatever the fuck you saw that made you say, don't DM kids to me. Because if you're actually insanely intelligent, you would be able to tell whether those screenshots were real or not, right? And you're not gonna blur anything. You're not gonna color anything out. You're not gonna blur out the username of whoever sent you the screenshot, if it's even a screenshot you saw. You're gonna come forward and you're gonna talk about what you saw to make you say that to me. And if it turns out to not be real, or if you just refuse to talk about it, then I want a fucking apology. A public one. Obviously, I don't want to be your friend again. But I, I, it's either going to be an apology, or you post whatever the fuck you saw, or whatever the fuck you were told. It's very possible that you were told something. So you're going to come forward and talk about it on camera. And I don't give a fuck if you don't want to be a part of this. Because you, by, by, by even DMing me that, you've become a part of this. So, I don't give a fuck about how you feel about this. Because this is shit involving me, right? Can't be exposing pedophiles in, in Iowa and eventually Hollywood if, if I'm one myself. So why don't you come down and take down the big bad butt piss before he becomes too powerful? Come, t come on, come wage war against the Antichrist himself. Seriously though, Stephanie, I either want a fucking apology or whatever the fuck you saw or heard. Thanks. Overnight transformation. I want an overnight transformation. I keep asking for it. I keep asking for it, and you guys keep not granting my fucking wish. How am I supposed to manipulate the world if I'm not the most beautiful man of all time? Like, am I supposed to lose weight naturally? 
Like it's not gonna like is it is it not a supernatural body change? Is it not like a supernatural overnight transformation? 